those rats i've been pretty quiet but it's just ridiculous the amount of trash out there now i see so many so many videos and ads about just from people that can't fucking like i'm like where the hell you come from it's like you just started training last year you made 500 dollars, and now you're teaching people it's like first trade i made five thousand dollars yes i am now an instant expert you know It's like, dude, I didn't even start service until like way later, way later. The reason is because like, you know what, man? It's not just about making money. It's about educating people. You know, there's, it's like Tom Brady. If Tom Brady can teach you to be, become the best quarterback, you know, it'd be cool. But, not, but, but sometimes you, you, you as a player are not a very good coach, just like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. But... He's a horrible educator. You know, he's an asshole. People hate him. <laughs> he's so good, but he's not an educator. So that, you know, so it leads me to this. So let's start. Um, you can be the best trader in the world, I'm telling you. But education is a totally different monster. And that's why you see a lot of these marketing guys preying upon, you know, desperate people wanting to learn. It's because the marketing guys sell themselves great. Those are, those are actually good mark, um, educators. They're educating you on how to get scammed, right? <laughs> they sell themselves very well, whereas a very good trader may not be a very good educator. So it's very rare. So the reason why I took so long to start a service is because like, dude, you have to, you have to find a process, a system that everybody can understand, not just yourself. I've been trained so long that sometimes I forget people don't understand things like, you know, what a VWAP is. It's just stuff like that, which a lot of people understand. Or just taking for granted. I know how to place a buy in a sale order. I have friends at home that couldn't figure it out. Okay, they don't understand that you can actually buy on the bid and sell on the offer. So those are the things that you know we take for granted. And so we have to create a system where everyone understands. And thank God that we, we, we actually, you know, through a lot of time and research, come up with a great process. And now... You know, I have actually tested this out on a, on a bunch of people before even MIC, okay? So I'll tell you this, you know, you don't want to go through this, but I, I, I taught Tosh, the low-hanging fruit. I was training with Alex for a while, and then Alex learned the system. And so he's become now fucking kicking ass. And so it works. You know, you, you know it, it's been proven. Faye's doing well. Vic's doing well. James, Tom, all these people, all the new people are now doing <laughs> even better than me. You know, a lot of times, so, and that's, that's what I love, man. I love educating people, and I'm, I'm gonna stop there because we're gonna start, um, I don't wanna keep talking about this stuff, but uh, but the best way to, to figure it out is just to ask the members what they think. That's the best thing, because you know, everybody's gonna say they're the best. And you know it's me, I don't, I, don't wanna, I don't need to say the best. And that's why when I post testimonials, I don't post big P&Ls, that doesn't mean anything. What I'd like to post is progress. Traders become consistent through progress, process, and consistency. So, okay, with that in mind, you can watch the food video and feel all that. But, so I'm going to start right now because, you know, everybody goes through a slump, guys. And everybody's slump is different. And I'm going to tell you what my slump was. People don't think I, I went through a slump. <laughs> Just because, I mean, I made money, but, you know, it's still a slump. You know, it's, it's like I should be better. And so I've, I'm always very critical of myself and so i think i suck and all this and so alex and i actually worked through this so this week has been you know these past two weeks has been really weird for me because each day i would wake up and follow my process and i'd be up like a bunch of money but it's only 15 minutes of the day <laughs> what i do is i spray about my process and that and then so uh, example is like dude each and every day almost every day i'm up like five grand in like the first 20 minutes right and then so what happens is that, that then it gets into my head i'm like fuck that's not enough five thousand is not fucking enough why didn't i fucking add more size all this stuff and so i, I get to this profit cushion shit in my head i'm like fuck okay I have five grand i'm gonna use that to gamble <laughs> that's what it is you know when, when you deviate from your process because what happens is this guys if you trust your process your process will spit out the p l and you have to accept that PL. It's like a car engine. 
you know you tune the engine and then the engine will go from zero to a hundred in let's say five five seconds you have to accept that you can't be like kicking the car saying you should have went faster so how do you improve that you improve the engine so i call the engine the process so you know you you you, you don't get bigger pnl by forcing it you get bigger pnl by fixing and refining your process and then feeding it perhaps more better fuel more size but you do not ever want to start deviating from your process your process so people always say take what the market gives you i say take what what your process gives you and that has been the problem i have and i'm very honest and transparent with all my emotional stuff and all my trading to the guys in mic you guys see that right i always talk about this even though i make money you know money is not an important thing guys it's how i made the money i want to make the money the way that i should be making the money not because i'm, I'm going through a backdoor way of of forcing trades and getting lucky and getting bailed out things like that you know there's a large component of luck in what you do but you don't want to rely on that so my problem was i was up too much <laughs> you know it's a stupid thing and this is not a humble brag guys seriously because it fucking frustrates the fuck out of me and so i end up the whole day trying to work back the loss so i'll give you an example i'd be up like three four grand right at the open because you know what man my shit hits and i'm like okay and then what happens is i get greedy that, that starts to leave out orders and i forget to clean up open orders and then it, it this whole week you saw that a bunch of zombies came up so what happens i turn a three thousand dollar winner into dude just like yesterday like an eight thousand dollar loss so i'm like what the fuck you know if three thousand wasn't enough i couldn't have, you know i just try to force more and so now i'm stuck with a from three thousand to eight thousand dollar loss and i end up the whole day grinding that shit back yeah i closed out like up like 4500 bucks and you see the stupidity of the swings this is like two five figure swings in one day so if i just did not have this fucked up mentality of i need to be better i need to be the best i need a bank i would just be walking away every day with a nice no stress easy money like alex does okay and so for so for a lot of you guys it doesn't matter what the number is guys it's not the number of the dollars because it's never going to be enough if you make a hundred you want 200 i swear if you made a million you want two million that was me dude i was up i was at 1.7 million on that day in fannie mae which is the anniversary is coming up by the way next week and i wanted two million i was like okay it's that fucking so you know what i did i fucking forced that shit i went back in on a 300,000 share trade <laughs> fuck within literally i'm not talking about one minute fuck i lost 300 grand back 300 fucking thousand dollars guys because i wanted to top off around that 1.7 to 2 million i got i i oversized i fucking deviate from my process boom you know how painful it is to lose three hundred thousand dollars within like five minutes they wouldn't feel me i was too big so the problem is you know what i knew it i wouldn't but i was like fuck let's just make a little more so what i did was i tripled the size just so i could just make a little bit more and that was the dumbest fucking shit so take it from me it's never enough you whatever the amount you have is never enough but that's not how you improve how you improve is okay you take the money that the process gives you and if you want fucking more you fucking refine the process but don't go back and try to do a makeup trade and so that greed has been killing me this entire week and also because i've been looking at other people's p l's i hate looking at other people's p l's because it gets you into a competitive mode which i hate about myself i'm a very aggressive um, emotional guy i'm like how did this motherfucker make more than me you know just stupid shit like that right so it's a big it's a big thing about your battling your ego and I, I talk about it a lot to the members all the time you have to control your ego and so that's why i always tell the members my mistakes you notice like alex and i we post our losses all the time I, I i am not shying away from losses i tell people how sucky i am and all that stuff because we want you to learn you know if, if your leader is always saying i'm the best i'm the best i don't make any mistakes and then when they lose they make it an excuse like oh summer trading oh my internet's bad oh my vagina hurts you know <laughs> shit like that it's like dude just own the fuck up you messed up it's okay don't fucking go revenge trade 
the worst thing I'd see is this, guys. The worst thing I can see is a is an educator who brags about being down so much, but that he worked his way out. I'm like, you motherfucker, you shouldn't be beat down that much. You should be using hard stops, stopping out, because you know what? You have money in your account. Other members do not. You can't afford to lose 50,000. Members can't even afford to lose 5,000. And they're following your trades, and you're on the fucking microphone pumping this shit, and you're averaging up and up and down, whatever the fuck it is, you're revenge trading, and then you brag about that fucking shit? How you were fucking down so much, now you like got out of it, I'm the fucking best trader. You dumb fuck. I'm telling you right now, dude, that's not how you're supposed to trade. And you may be fine for yourself, but members will blow up and that creates bad habits for everybody. Okay, that's why I fucking hate, man. I want to. I don't want to talk about it because the people they using the PL to draw members in as sheep. Okay, we don't do that. I want you to learn to trade the correct way. That's why. That's why we don't post much shit. We don't pump shit. You know, we, we show charts. And I, I would hate to be down that much and then make it back. I shouldn't be there because what happens is this: you get away from, get away from it this time, get away with it. But the next time you may not. And a lot of members will see that. They, they want to emulate the leader. So you have to lead by example. So that's why we're doing these IG lives. And if you take a look at what I do, I, I love to talk about my failures more than my success. You don't see me hardly bragging about success. But every time I take a loss, I make a video about it. I talk to the members about it. I talk about it, talk about it. Because you know what, man? The, these are the same lessons that members are going through. And so, which leads me to this. So, a few months ago, Alex went through a big, big drought. He wasn't even losing money. He was just not making money. He was like flatlining all day. He was scared to take sides. He was scared, not even take sides. He was scared to enter a trade. He was like, dude, I don't know if I have it. I don't have it. And then, boom, what happens? You know, he got out of it. So, I'll let him talk about how he got out of that slump. And the same thing with me this, this week, dude. These past two weeks, it's not like I, I lost money, I didn't lose money, I made, I made money, but but I'm sitting there thinking, fuck, dude, I, prob I probably gave back 30 grand. I mean, that's a lot of fucking money, right? $30,000. By being stupid. Just being fucking stupid. And so today I talked about it. Alex and I, we love to take our money out when it hits a certain threshold. So today I'm wiring money out as well. And, and, and the thing is, I used to grow my account, and then when you grow your account, the money in your account doesn't mean very much because you need to equate it back to the reality. $5,000 in real life is a shitload of money, guys. That's making the rain money. That's someone's fucking mortgage payment. That's someone's fucking like life savings. But then when I'm looking at the screen, th this is how I get into the... You can change this to any number you want, okay? So I'm like, oh, I'm only down 3000 a day, which is nothing, paper cut, 5000 But you know what, man? Those add up. So every day, like Alex told me today, so he fixed my mind this week. He's like, Val, you know what, man? I know you. you. When you're up, you like to gamble it because it's entertainment for you, which is true. You know, I, 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 I fucking stopped fucking thinking how much three or five thousand dollars. And so I, I, I gamble it away for entertainment every day. But then when I look back, it's just so stupid. I'm, I'm here teaching everybody not to be stupid and gambling. But here I am doing what I tell people not to do. You know, just because I can afford it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, that it's the right thing. And I'm really mad about myself. I'm really mad at the fact that, you know, one day you fuck up like that doesn't mean much. But then I did this for like a week straight. And then when I look back at how much I was up and then how much I gave back, I'm just like, you stupid. You are stupid. It's, and then, you know, it hit me finally when yesterday, you know what I did? I, I booked some flights back to go home. My friends wanted a party house, we booked an Airbnb, whatever. I'm like, this Airbnb is only like 1200 bucks. And here I am, I, I pissed that in like an hour. And, and so like, it hit me, it dawned on me like, dude, you're stupid, bro. What the fuck are you doing? You know, this could be any bound number, guys. $100 is a lot of money in real life too, man. $500 is a lot of money too. So Alex told me, dude, Val, you know, the first thing you have to drop your ego. You know, so I dropped it, I was like, dude, 
You know, it's, it's okay that you don't make a hundred thousand dollars every day. <laughs> you know, it's okay. You don't fucking be, you know, making 10,000 every day. You take what the process gives you, you be happy with it. And you know what, man? And, 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 and so I switched it today, guys. I switched it today where I had no FOMO trade today. I came in the day, size the fuck down. I size hella small just so that I, I can get back on track. I mean, I made money yesterday. I made money this week. I made money, this, you know, but that's not the point, right? The point is like, dude, it, it, you, you, you have to get back into the rhythm, the process, okay? And, and, and what, when you go through a big streak of a winner, sometimes you forget that, guys. It's, like I said, there's a, two very dangerous types of, of streaks. The losing streak, where you lose your confidence and you can't get it back. And then, the, and then the winning streak, where you become overly confident. And then you end up with a, one monster trade that wipes out all the gains that you did, okay? I've eliminated, thank God, that second scenario. Because I use hard stops. I use a max daily loss. So I so that I cannot lose more than ten thousand dollars per account. <laughs> but the problem is I have a lot of accounts, right? <laughs> but um but still that's not I, I look back at my old losses, there were like hundred thousand there was like fifty thousand dollar losses, hundred thousand dollar losses. So it's like that would never happen again, not on wood. Because I put a fence around it. Now I'm just trying to tie up my game where I'm not unnecessarily wasting my gains. Because I always tell people this, okay, before I bring on Alex, it's not how much you make, guys, it's how much you save, okay? It's not how much you make in life, it's how much you save. I can make fucking 10 grand a day, but if I piss $8,000 a day, I only fucking have 2,000. Same thing in real life. You can make, you know, I know a lot of guys that are making $100,000 a year and are bankrupt because they spend too much. You know, I've been there as a kid too. I made a shitload of money and I'm fucking like, what do I have to show for it? And so the mentality is, is like, it's like, it's not really how much you make guys, it's, it's how much you save. So every bit helps because if I just trade for one day, that $3,000 is not going to mean much. But if I do the 3000 every day for a month, 20 days, that's 60 G's I give away. And I've done that. I've been doing that for a long time. You know, it's just stupid. It just happens that I was good at what I was doing, but you know, it's just stupid. And so, but before MIC, I can get away with it because I'm just trading for myself. Now I'm trying to lead by example. And so I don't want other members to see bad habits. They say, oh, Bao, Bao revenge traded. Bao traded the zombie hour. Bao fought the stock all day and he got bailed out. Why can't I do that? So that's the last thing I want to ever do. And so Alex, Alex helped me out as well. So we talked about it and then today was great, man. No fucking FOMO. I actually finished within the first 20 minutes of the day. I'm like, holy fuck. You know, I, I made more in a, in a, today than I used to make as an engineer, you know, in 20 minutes. And and the thing is, I, then I started to feel the FOMO again. I'm like, fuck, hmm, I, I gotta fuck it. I have big cushion. I can go back and make double, <laughs> you know, that, but that starts the steamroll. So I said, fuck it. I'm gonna go now do an IG live. So that's what some of you guys need to do, guys. So you guys just need to walk the fuck away because you cannot be helped. You're like a, an, a, an addict like myself. I love this shit. It's not even about the money for me, right? It's about the adrenaline rush, about nailing it. And so that's the dangerous part for a lot of you guys. So, the, so I, I think back when I was young, when I had money because of a job, I gambled all the way uh, trading because I thought it was gambling. But then, but then I quit my job. I was like, holy fuck, dude, I have no more income. So I have to treat this seriously. So the moment you treat trading seriously and not as a hobby, not as entertainment is when you become successful. It's when you're able to take the stop loss. It's when you're able to walk the fuck away with whatever gains you have and not have an arbitrary quota in your head. Do not have that quota in your head. That quota will fucking kill you, okay? And how many times have I tried to round up because I'm at 9,000, $700. I just want to make $300 more to be in the five figure club. And I end up fucking lose half of my gains back. So, I'm going to bring Alex on. Where are you at, Alex? Here we go. Same thing with Tosh. We're going to talk about how, what? Hey, brother. Yeah, you see me? Yeah, you're looking good, bro. Uh, it's the it's the no beard. <laughs> Holy shit, your hair's nice too. Yeah, brother, you looking good. 
It was good, man. What's up, dude? You talked about a lot of good shit, man. So what I want to kind of talk about a couple things first is, number one, dude, is like you mentioned that, you know, you start pissing away gains. And to me, bro, what I learned is that, bro, if you're pissing away $2,000 worth of gains every single day, that's 10 grand a week. That's fucking 40 grand a month that you're pissing away for entertainment. So when I see you doing that, bro, it, it only tells me that I have more of a reason to walk away, right? Because I'm the same way, dude. I am fucking addicted, man. If I am in front of the screens, I am going to find trades on fucking Apple. I'm going to find trades on fucking Spy. I'm going to find trades on everything. So for me, dude, I need to eliminate myself from the equation. And that's how my personality works, bro. If I have chocolate cake at home, if I have ice cream at home, if I have cookies at home, I will not stop until I feel sick. <laughs> so I have to keep it away from my house. I have to eliminate it. So I use the same process in the real world that I use trading. I just walk away, man. So that's, that's what helps me. Talk about your – remember the slump and how you overcame that because that's very important. And I, and yeah, I, so, I, I always look at that at whenever I go through a slump too. Yeah, so I was in the beginning of the year, January, February. I was kind of going through a slump. And like Val said, I wasn't really losing money. It was just that I wasn't making money. And I was kind of losing my confidence every day. Every time I traded something, I had to stop out. Every time I was uh, in a trade, it didn't work out until later. And I started to lose my confidence, man. I just went through a slump and I just wasn't feeling good, man. I just wasn't feeling like myself. Like no matter what type of person you are, what type of trader you are, if you go in a slump for a day or a week, it just fucks with your head. You're like, shit, am I really, am I really supposed to be trading? Is this really a job that I want to do? Am I even fucking good at it? You start doubting yourself. You start, you start thinking of all the bad examples in the book. So for me, it was kind of like going back to basics, right? Focus on what got you here in the first place. Focus on the low-hanging fruit. We always go back, when we, whenever we're in a slump, man, we always go back to the basics. We go back to the easiest strategies, low-hanging fruit, and death line to regain our confidence and come back. And before exactly. you know it, bro, before you know it, you hit a fucking home run like that Tesla trade. That Tesla trade was the thing that kind of rewired my brain and said, you know what? We are all human, man. We all go through slumps. We all deal with personal issues, family issues, friend issues. And that's what trading is about, bro. It's about ups and downs, right? Life is about ups and downs. So there's going to be certain moments where we are hot and everything we touch works out. And there's going to be certain times that things don't work out. Well, and it's things, also like this. This is really what we have to understand. Sometimes it's not us, Alex. It's the yeah. stock itself. Our, yeah. strat our strategies work. When they work, they fucking work. But when they don't work, this, that is the problem. When they don't work, this is where you do well. You stop out. Yeah. These other, other people, other people don't do that. What they do is my strategy should work all the time. I'm going to fight it and fight it until I win. Yeah, and then I'm going to reverse sides with double the size and go long instead. And that didn't work. Okay, quadruple the size and make it back. So that's what you need to realize. So, so, so your journey is actually very, very profound that people need to understand. So Alex was very successful. Everything he touched worked before. And then all of a sudden, you call it a drought because yeah. nothing was banking. But you know what, man? It's not you. Sometimes you have to understand. The, it's the stock. The stock did not fit the strategies that we did at that time. It did not exactly. perform to the chart. But the best thing you can do when shit doesn't work is to stop out for a small loss. Stop out and go back to basics because what ends up happening is we lose our confidence, man. Like even you, bro. You've been trading for fucking 20 years. You've made a million dollars in a day, yet you are getting in your own fucking head because that's what happens, man. We you, lose you, our you know what fucked control. me up last week? Dude, dude, I, I was up like five grand and I ended up closing the day down three grand. This dude yeah. is tiny, right? That's, that's like my low key fee, right? Yeah. But it's, it just shows you it's not the money, guys. It's not the fucking money. It's the fact that, you know what? Like sometimes you like don't know what the fuck you're doing because you're, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to keep changing your, your system around. It's like a guy trying to swing a baseball bat and he's always switching his stance because he doesn't feel comfortable. But, but he needs to understand that, yo, trust, trust what you've been doing for 10 years. You know, you yep. may have a slump now, but don't fucking change everything you're fucking around. Exactly, and so, bro. And trading is a game of probability, man. So yep. we know that nothing is ever going to work 100% of the time. It works nine times out of 10. That yep. one time that it doesn't work, people say, oh, my God, the strategy doesn't work. I'm fucked. But they fail to realize that that is just the process actually working, right? Because it's not going to work 100% of the time. So the worst thing that you could do that you've explained to me 
is that when you are trading and when something is following the plan, if a death line doesn't work one time, that doesn't mean that the death line doesn't exist anymore. It just yep. means that in the matter of probabilities, this is the one time out of 10 that it didn't work out and you exactly. should not deviate. Exactly. And the, the problem with traders, this is, okay, so all you traders at home watching this shit, when shit don't go r r your way, you have two choices. Accept the loss or fight it. Because thinking, why didn't it work? I must be a shitty trader. It's not you sometimes. It's just not you. It's just the stock does not do what you wanted it to do. So what, yep. what Alex did well was he went through a slump, but he didn't go broke going through the slump. He took these paper cut losses, manual losses every day. And, that's, and then when I look at my slump, my slump was like the same thing. My losses were not massive. They're like $3,000 loss on a day. That's basically less than a day of work, right? And, yep. but, but for some reason in my head, I'm like, fuck, this sucks. It sucks. And I started to doubt myself. And so when I look back now, hopefully my stuff is over, but um, <laughs> knock on wood. But when I look back, I'm like, dude, if my slump is only making me lose small manual losses, that's a fucking good, good slump, bro. Or trading yep. is a fucking good slump because our process works. And, it, and the, the, the thing that's keeping us in the game is the risk management. That's the thing that people don't, don't, don't understand. It's not how you make the – it's not the money. It's how you make the money. These guys are revenge trading just to break even. That, that is, that's going to create a bad process, a bad habit in their head. Yeah, man. It's like, dude, it's, I've, I've been blessed to have a really good week this week and a really good week last week and a really good couple months. I've been green somehow, some way for three months straight. And it's because I'm not even thinking about it, bro. I am being robotic. I am waking up. I am trading and I'm walking away at 1030. I've been doing that every single day for three months and go figure. I've been green every single day for three months. And it just goes back to the same thing, bro. I am avoiding the day one plays like the plague, right? Like surf, S-U-R-F. I avoided it all day yesterday when people were blowing up. And today I had the most stress-free trade shorting the bounce after the gap down, right? I didn't make $10,000 on it. I only made $1,000 on it, but that $1,000 was without stress. That $1,000 was without a loss yesterday. And every day it's adding up, man. Every Correct. single day it's adding up. And, and when the process hits, it hits. That's the point. Not every play is going to be a monster. You have to remind yourself. You're basically buying time until a stock comes that fits your profile. And when right. that stock comes, you hammer it. That's how you do it. And, and, and the one thing that has their own setups, right? So I, I like the first red day because that this year has been paying out the most for me. So what I do is I trade day to day, low hanging fruit, death line, short into resistance. But when a first red day comes along, that to me has proved that I have a bigger edge. So I size up on that stock rather than sizing up on everything. Correct. So go back to your trades, guys. See which ones you do well and focus on sizing those up and avoiding the marginal trades. That's why I, I talked to Alex about last night. I was trying to trade too many stocks. My weakness is greed. I want to nail every fucking stock. And then when there's 10 runners, that's when I fuck up. When there's like three runners, I, I hardly lose. Because I focus on those. I, I fucking nail those. But when there's too many shit, I'm trying to nail everything. That's when I fucking lose. So go yeah, back man, to sometimes. Yeah, sorry. Go for oh, it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, sometimes, bro, you, you also piss away gains for entertainment, bro. It is cheaper to fucking buy a new TV on Amazon than to fucking Seriously. piss away this two grand, bro. So next That's time, when the top comes around, bro, I'm going to send you a link to Amazon. I'm going to send you a link to eBay. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's what I always say, man. Online shopping is cheaper. I've been saying this for a decade. And, you know, I have to remind myself. Sometimes we forget. Seriously, we forget. And, you know, you know what brings us back to earth? I'm telling you, I used to trade by myself. And there's no way most traders that go through slumps can ever get out of it by themselves. They don't know what yes. the problem is. And so having a community, having a tab, having a community is what got you over the slump. It's got uh, me over the slump in record time. It's not like I'm going to wait a year to figure this shit out. You know, we talk about all that stuff. So, so I, I, I want to tell the world this, guys. We cannot do shit by ourselves sometimes. I am not a robot. I'm a human being with a lot of fucked up, bad habits, fucked up emotions, and all that. And so MIC, and having a chat with you, Alex, has helped me profoundly. I would still be successful, but I would not be, you know, be happy. And I would not be not stressed. Today, I was stress-free. It's been like a week or two weeks since I've been this stress-free. 
<laughs> and notice what I did, bro. You made your money in the morning and you walked away a zombie time. You follow the process that we keep repeating and we keep teaching to members. It's only when we deviate that we lose money. So the more times we deviate, the more we teach ourselves not to fucking deviate. Correct. And so like I said, guys, so when you're talking about joining MIT, you're not, man, join to learn, but more importantly, also, in my opinion, join to have support. Got people yeah. that are doing this. This is why people go to the gym, guys. I used to have a home gym. I never used my fucking home gym because I was never motivated. So I make myself go to the gym to see other people work out. Same thing with the chat room. Same thing with MIC. I'm seeing other people stick to the process like Faye and killing it every fucking day. So it motivates me, right? It's amazing, bro, because you say you see all these success stories in MIC and all of them have tabs, right? So Faye has a tab, Vic, they kick ass together. Tom has a tab, James, they kick ass together. You got people like Adam and Brandon that are tab partners. They help each other out. So the whole secret that we didn't even know is that when you and me were trading together, that was kind of our secret weapon to if I like the same setup and you like the same setup and we had the same lines drawn, that gave us both the confidence. But if one of us was off, we second guessed ourselves. So by using this process that we didn't even know, we kind of helped each other out, become better traders together, bro. Correct. That's how we started the tap process. By accident. We started trading together. And we, and we fucking like, holy fuck, we made each other better. You know, how can a little how can a little kid that just started trading make me better? But it made me better. That just shows you the power. It's not it's not what you know. It's just it's just working with other people. It's not yep. what they know, seriously. Because you know what? It's like a jigsaw puzzle in life. If I meet another trader like myself, we will probably not get along. But, but I mean, someone like you, Alex, who has, you know, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. We supplement each other with the pieces fit. You don't exactly. need to have the same exact, you know, piece of the puzzle. Exactly. And, and so I'm telling everybody out there, guys, join to get a fucking tab. You're a fucking idiot if you're trading alone. Why? Why? You know, and we, we, we've proven, we've proven that the tab system works. And that's what makes people learn quicker. That's, that's the honest truth, man. Before this, yep. man, we were taking forever to learn. Now we have students learning in a matter of months, not it's years. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. It's, it's, you can't fucking believe it, dude. It took me, the way that I explain it to people is because they don't understand, right? They see a 40 grand week this week. They see up 600 grand on the year. And they're like, oh my God, that's fucking amazing. They forget that it's been six years of trading. It was one year of losing money, one year of breaking even, and then making money after year three. James is making money after a few uh, months. Faye is making money after two months. So every single time that we keep improving MIC, the members are improving and they are finding consistently, consistency quicker. It is no surprise or no coincidence that the members that watch the videos religiously are the ones that are finding success as quickly as possible, man. Correct. And, and I'm going to tell you, man, the only reason I survived this long to be gained is because I had a good paying job. I kept on reloading my account. Not many people can do that. And so if, if I didn't have a good paying job, I might not even be here talking to you right now. I may be just an engineer and not a trader anymore. So, so guys out there, you know, the, the failure might not be just you. It's just the fact that you are not in the right environment. Like, what, like right now, dude, the gyms are closed. I don't see people motivated to work out. I'm not working out. I'm the fattest I've ever been in my fucking <laughs> life. And so before I see people working out, the same analogy, man. It's like, why should I pay for a gym membership? I have a gym set at home. You, you, you don't just pay for the gym uh, equipment. You pay for the environment, the people, you know, meeting people, seeing people work out, that sort of environment, man. That fucking really helps. Exactly, bro. Exactly. And another thing that we mentioned in the beginning is equating the money to the real world. Because the example that I give is if you have a fucking $500,000 account and you let your account grow, 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 if you lose a hundred grand, it's really not the end of the world. You're like, oh, I still have 300 grand left. But if you have a small account, a $35,000 account, you cannot afford to lose five grand, which makes you be even more disciplined with your stops. Today, I posted it to the guys in the room that my $35,000 account grew to 50K. And every time my account grows to 50K, I wire out $15,000 to pay myself. That doesn't mean that I buy a new watch. That doesn't mean that I buy a new toy. It means I put that in the bank and I save it, right? Because that's what Bao says. Bao says, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you save. So if every single time that I'm getting a $15,000 paycheck out of my account, not only is it rebalancing my account, not only is it building my confidence, 
not only is it building my bankroll, but now I am able to equate that shit. I shouldn't even be losing a thousand dollars in a trade because that's still so much money in the real world. If you see a thousand dollars on the screen, it's like, fuck that, right? You paid $500 in locates today and you're like, oh, that's whatever. But you wouldn't fucking pay $500 for a pair of sneakers. It's different, right? But when you Dude. equate it to the real world, that's what matters. This, this, was, this was last night me and you talking, Alex, trying to book this fucking $250 a night <laughs> Airbnb fucking place to, for, for my friends a party for the weekend. And, and it's like, I'm like trying to be cheap about it. I'm, I'm like, you dumbass. You've been pissing away three grand every day this week. And you're, and you're cheap on $250. Trying to get it on a certain credit card so I get points. It's like I'm trying to fucking – I spent two hours trying to save $100 on that. <laughs> yeah, but that's how it works, man. That's how it works. We have but, to be But by doing that, Alex, I'll tell you that. By doing that is what set my mind straight. I equated back the numbers on the trading screen to real life. I yeah. realized that, fuck, dude. What am I doing? That's a lot of fucking money. But on the screen, you seem like a lot of money to me. But in real life, $1,000 is a shitload of money. Exactly, bro. I say to myself, today I made, I think, $1,800. Slow day, right? Slow day. Bro, I was making, I think, $150 a week working at Starbucks. A week. Now I made 10 times that, and it's a slow day. That's where the mind gets fucked up, dude. That's why we have to wire out and equate it to something, right? Yep, that's exactly right, man. So I... And think hopefully that, that kind of fucking set my straight because you're stuck in quarantine too, guys. You don't go out. You don't spend anything. So you really, you know, sometimes you forget and you lose. So, I mean, I, I hope one day you'll get to that position. I don't want to talk about like we're douchebag making too much money and not equating to the real life. But, you know what? It could be any amount of money, man. The fact that you guys, you guys are fucking joining means you're already blessed. That's what I always look about life, right? We, we are blessed. The fact that you have a phone to watch – this Instagram live. Don't cry. You are already blessed. Yep. And so That's now, it, yep. Anything else? That's uh, it. What, we what, have. What, oh yeah. Talk about the, the what's coming up and when, because yes. everyone's asking me. Yeah, everyone's asking. So we are finally in the last phase of the uh, accelerator. We are shooting to have it released Monday or Tuesday. What we did is we released it for lifetime members for about a month or two early access so that they could adjust it, they could give us feedback, we could kind of take their feedback and improve it, and we actually made it a little bit longer. It went from seven hours to seven hours and 40 minutes with a bunch of additional content that we put in there. So we're gonna be releasing this early next week, guys. So stay, uh, be on the lookout for it. We will announce it, we will talk about it, but the goal of this new course is to take someone that doesn't know anything about trading to place in their first trade in just seven hours, guys. With confidence, correct. Not, not just yep. any trade, with confidence. And this will also help existing traders to maybe learn a new strategy, right? That we, we so this DVD is basically going to explain to you how Alice and I trade. It's not, exactly. It's not like a made up shit. We trade like this and members see it every day. And in fact, you make a watch list every day. Talk about that, dude. This is yeah, people, so, people take it for granted. It's, dude, it's, it's so funny, man. Because like, I make, a, I make a morning watch list every single day. I do it right at like around 8, 8.30 in the morning because that's when the most people are kind of getting to their desk. I also do a video watch list three or four times a week. Uh, so what I do is I basically just plot out my entries, plot out my exits, and these are the actual plans that I am using to execute on. So if you see something like uh, SURF or NNDM or whatever it is, if it is on my watch list, I am basically trading it and I just let it do its thing. There's a lot of members that wake up at 9 in the morning Look at the watch list, put a fantasy order in, and if it hits, it hits. If it hits, it, if it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. But that's not what that's what some people do. Some other people, they make their watch list, then they review it with mine, then they adjust it. So there's different types of people, right? So we want to be able to help anyone that just needs it. If you want to use the watch list as your way to just trade without thinking, or if you want it to, to use it as your way to improve your own watch list, use it however way you see fit. But please, for the love of God, just look at it. Because every day there's at least one one easier, easier trade that you could take by just sticking to the watch list. You did something good today that I like, which I'm like, holy shit, you, you show people how you make your watch list. So oh, now yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so yeah, so what I do is sometimes... Um, Don't tell the secrets, make them join. <laughs> but, but you know, yeah, right? we, we basically do this, guys. We, a lot of guys just give stock picks, but we actually tell you to figure out how to trade for yourself. And that's the whole thing. So we actually hurting our own business, right? By revealing everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, crazy, man. It's crazy. We have 700 videos, man. 700 videos on YouTube. 
Yeah, people are still asking the fucking four X signals, man. Yeah, it's eight hundred. It's, it's, on- it's every day, guys. It's every day. We have what's it? Seven days a week. We, we we release at least seven to eight videos a week for free. But that's that's what it is. And guys, I'm gonna tell you something. You don't have to. So if you join now, next week you'll get it. And we're only giving this out for the first month, guys. Okay, we may stop at any time if too many give it out, but. The, the point is, you know, for the first month, we're going to give it free for the annual and lifetime members. If you want to join lifetime now, we'll give you the early access, access to it. So you don't need to wait. Yep. You know, put your spots in now and start learning now before the DVD comes out, before the accelerator comes out. I use that word DVD. We're going to stop using that because that's not what it is. The accelerator course to jumpstart your training. Yep. So yeah, text, uh, text Tosh. Text Tosh. Uh, we have a long weekend, guys. Have a great Memorial Day. And we will see you online and next week. See you guys. Bye, guys. Take care.